Okay, so now we're going to look at the male reproductive system in the bull. Here we see the ductus deferens coming in. And we have our genital fold. Okay, we see this broadening of the ductus deferens as at the ampulla of the ductus deferens. The vesicular glands in the bull are more gland-like, as we see here. This very little bit here is what we see of the prostate gland. Remember, the prostate gland has a little bit of an external portion, but then it has a portion that is within the wall of the urethra, and that's the disseminate portion of the prostate gland. Come back here more caudally, and we see the bobo urethral gland here on both sides. Then we have the root of the penis. Here we can see the retractor penile muscle. So back here at the base of the penis, we see the ischiocavernosus muscle. Down more centrally is going to be the bobospongiosis muscle. And then we can see down on this section here, we can see the retractor penis muscle. Okay, so we've got that sigmoid flexure in the bovine specimen because they are a fibroelastic penis rather than a musculocavernous like the horse. And we can see corpus cavernosum dorsally. Down here more ventrally, the urethra surrounded by the corpus spongiosum. Okay. Down here we have the prepuce. The opening is in here. And it's kind of dried out on the end here, but we have the urethral process down here. Okay. Okay, here we're looking at the testes from a bull. Okay, in this case, the testis sits more like this so that the head of the epididymis is going to be dorsal and the tail is going to be ventral. So we have our pampiniform plexus as our vessels come in. And then we have our head of our epididymis, the body and the tail. This is the testis here. And then we have coming off of the tail of the epididymis, the ductus deferens. We have visceral vaginal tunic here and the parietal vaginal tunic here. Okay, we don't see the cremaster muscle well on this specimen. So we look here at this bovine pelvis. We can see the termination of the aorta here going into the external iliacs. Okay, here we have coming off and we can trace it to the descending colon is going to be the caudal mesenteric artery. Okay, then we have our internal iliac arteries. Internal iliacs are going to be very long in the bovine as they are going to give off the cranial gluteal early and then continue as the internal iliac till they get to the caudal gluteal. Okay, so, here, so here's internal iliac here coming off and it's going to give off an umbilical artery. That umbilical artery we can identify it because it's coming back here to the lateral ligament of the urinary bladder. Okay, and it's going to remain at least partially patent because it's going to give off in the male, it'll give off the deferential artery, but in the female, it's going to give off the uterine artery. Okay, so the main supply to the uterus. There will also be a uterine branch from the vaginal, as well as a uterine branch from the ovarian artery. And then it continues as internal 
iliac gives off the cranial gluteal here and then much more caudally is going to give off that caudal gluteal. Here we can trace down the branches of the external iliac. We have the deep circumflex iliac, external iliac. Coming down we give off the deep femoral, continue as the femoral. That deep femoral has a pudendoepigastric trunk that is going to divide into the caudal epigastric and the external pudendal here. And running with that, crossing over that deep circumflex iliac is the genital femoral nerve. Okay.